Hey YouTube, what's up? Johnny Glock here. Um, I have an awesome video for you today. Uh, you know, I like to do this stuff really impromptu and you know, when uh, something uh, presents itself for me to um, just do what I do, you know, instruction, whatever. Uh, and remember, this is educational only, so uh, do not try any of this at home. I'm actually not doing anything per se in this video, but I am going to show you some things. Um, let's just start with the story, okay? So a gentleman buys, uh, this is David from New York. Just got off the phone with him. To, uh, I had to um, get a lot of information from him about this. So um, buys a brand new Gen 4 out of the box. Um, sends it off to um, a company to be unnamed. Waits, uh, pays $2,000 and waits six months to get the gun back. It comes back and uh, you know very unhappy with the uh, you know the trigger and the functioning of the gun and so um, he sends it to me to um, go over and do my enhancement and all that stuff and, and put a you know design the trigger to be better you know after he's already spent thirty one hundred dollars uh, on this gun so. There were so many things presenting in this gun that are just good information for, I mean, it, it, people to have uh, things to look for. Um, you know, at a gl someone like me at a glance can see things that someone that just isn't in the profession, you know, for, for whatever, you know, because they're not doing it every day. Just like anyone that's a professional that can look at, you know, like a good doctor is going to be able to diagnose things when he walks in and stuff like that. Um, but with this particular build, I'm kind of blown away because there's definitely things in here that are telltale. Now, let's put it this way. If I was, um, if I was, I keep bending down here. I have the camera down. So if I was, if I was put on a court, what I'm going to be telling you right now is all from my professional opinion. If I was put, if I was asked to be like an expert witness, on some things and they said, do you believe this to be true? I would have to say absolutely. In my professional opinion, this is, uh, this is what's going on here. So um, let's get the camera down to what we're talking about. And um, I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this video because I know I'm really gonna like working on this gun. So I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna try to do a lot of uh, Shall we say, um, just want to make sure I get a decent. I wonder why this thing is. That's bizarre. I'm trying to figure out why I can't get it to. And this thing used to work pretty good. Yeah, I'm not editing this because I just don't have time and my phone's ringing. Okay, um, so here we go. This is the, and I know it's a little bit crooked, I do apologize. I don't know what's going on with my sophisticated um, camera system here. Oh, shit. Anyway, all right, let's bring it like right there because it's going to start to settle and settle. And settle, there we go. It's like a fucking magic show. It's like a polymer 80 of uh, cameras. When, not, not, not the camera, but the, uh, the actual mount. Okay, so here we go. Bill comes back, hates the trigger, figures out he'll shoot it for a while. He puts 700 rounds through the gun. So, um, you know, the, the gun has 700 rounds through it, to my knowledge. And even what, what I'm seeing here... Is, is stuff that you're going to see um, closer to, I don't even know what round count, maybe five to 7,000, somewhere around there. Um, I tend to see these things uh, presenting. This is driving me crazy, guys. Anyway, I don't know how to fix it. I guess when we start close up anyway, you're not gonna have to worry about it. I'm gonna see if I kill this light if it's any better. Okay, there we go. Might be able to see. There's not much shine on it. So, you know, it's a Gen 4 frame. 
Um, and, you know, I'm not going to say anything about the framework or anything like that because it's really not my forte. You know, I do the laser stippling now. Um, it's kind of like that waffle velvety stuff with the cutout on the inside and the, I think this is a trademarked cut or something like that. So, um, I do like the Magwell though. Anyway, getting to what, and, and actually if I look inside the frame, because remember, uh, you, you know, if you have some of my videos and let me, let me, let me take this telephoto right now so we can see what we're dealing with here. So if you watch my videos, you'll know that, you know, the, there's a lot inside of this frame that can tell you a lot of stuff. So I'm, ha I'm having you look at the polymer outcroppings that are, let me get a pointer, these right here, one, two, three, and then the fourth one is right there. Now, um, this is a brand new gun. These are not worn, and they don't have any significant type of uh, markings on them that are going to lead me to believe that there's something odd going on in there. There's a little bit of mark, like a little bit of marking right there, but not enough to warrant what I'm going to be showing you here soon. Um, also, you can see, a, eh, there wasn't any work under the rail tabs, and at least the slide lock was put in correctly. So let's move away from that, because that's really the only thing I wanted to show you in there, those outcroppings. And, and remember this one back here, um, because you can, s I'm trying to get a real good close up of that one. So you can see there's no real wear on it. Okie doke. All right, so let's move to um, the, the, the guts of the gun. So first thing, and, and you guys have to remember, this is a brand new Gen 4 build. Um, number one, when I opened the gun up and I looked at the trigger bar, of course I noticed that it was, you know, it was a Gen 3 bar, no big deal, but the way this is cut right here is really, really pushing it when it comes to getting the correct uh, depression of the safety plunger. And, it, and that's actually showing in, I'm gonna grab a Gen 3 bar here just so you can see. So this is, this is the cut that I use right there. And you can see that's, that's definitely enough of a scallop out right there to do what you need this thing to do, especially if you're minimizing pre-travel. So you see how this has all that surface area on the top, okay? That's what you need to actually depress uh, the safety plunger. And this build, this, this, this bar that I have right here with mine, it's, it's my combat, so it's matched with the flatness of the OEM uh, safety plunger. So these are gonna interface perfectly, and I know 100%, without a doubt, this is going to depress the safety plunger to give the firing pin the cr proper amount of uh, room, or tolerance that it needs to push through the breech face, past the safety firing pin safety plunger. Safety, okay, so that's, I'm just showing you this so you see actually how the margins pretty much work from my opinion okay so now you have this cut which is as you can see there's uh, it's not even as high as the highest point on this one it is cut past there to where the actual bar starts to take this downward movement right there and so you can see it's, that's why it has an angle right there up to where this thing is scalloped. Now, you know, what does that mean? What that means is, and okay, so we're going to, we're going to put that together with two things here. So this is the modified safety plunger. Um, it's an OEM safety plunger. It's very telltale. You can tell the way it was probably chucked in a drill and you know, the, uh, the bevel is taken off of it. So you can see the difference. All right, 
Now with mine, I knocked the bevel down to be smooth. Like you can see right there, it's, I mean, you can see right here on this one, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a line. It's just a little bit rounded right there because I need that surface area on that, on that to make sure I have 100% uh, you know, disengagement of the safety. And on this one, you can see if I bring it up really close, hopefully we'll get a, we'll be able to, no, there we go. Okay, you can't see it on mine, but you can see the different surface areas right there perfectly. So you have the size of, the, of that little dot in the middle right there that's the only part that's not chamfered that's going to catch, supposedly, catch this piece to depress the safety plunger. And I should have it upside down. But this piece is going to come across here. And this is rough. This is going to come across here and push this up. Okay. So that's, that's, not, that's not what's happening at all. And the way you can tell that is by looking at this safety plunger. Let me get up here on the stool. And come on. Oh, sorry about that, y'all. Looking at this safety plunger, and you can see, and a lot of people don't realize this part, if it's messed up, it spins. It spins a little bit anyway, but... And try, now I'm telling you, this, was a, this is a brand new Gen 4, okay? Brand new 750 rounds is not going to take the nickel start to take the nickel copper away see how it's all all moved all disappeared from right there right on that shelf that i'm showing you hopefully you know what i'm look to, talking about as i'm spinning this it's all worn the whole damn thing's worn away try to get a little bit closer yeah it's at top well not this not the very top here but this shelf right here that i'm, that I'm showing you these are hard to keep a hold of so you have that and the reason you have that there's another pretty good shot of it the reason you have that is because this is not let me see if i can this does not have enough depression right here when it comes back like that to push this up and out of the way enough to allow the safety so the safety sits here and this is freaking hard safety sits here and I need you to see that shelf so when the, when it gets pushed up it's allowed to go through it via those two shelves Okay, so maybe if I show you up here, it'll make more sense. Now nah, I can't even get, okay. So when it gets pushed up, it's allowed to pass through there. But what it's doing instead is there's not enough clearance. So this part of the shelf right here, which is the top part, I better get a pointer. This part of the shelf right here, which is the top part, is smacking this and causing it to spin. So it smacks it. So it's basically like it'll grab, it's gonna, say this is the safety plunger right here. It grabs it and pushes it like this and the safety plunger rolls. I should keep my finger stationary. It pushes it again and the safety plunger rolls. Then it drags it back. So it's rubbing back and forth on the safety plunger. I hope you guys are following me. Leave some comments and I'll explain uh, if you want me to. But this is, better but this is what's happening so it hits the shelf it rotates it hits the shelf it rotates it i'm really gonna have to work on these camera angles it'll be better for the digital download so anyway this is this is a, this is a fuck up man this is not this is and okay so here's another issue there no one and this is what i was telling you if i was in a court a lot no one is telling me this was the brand new um out of his gen 4 that this was the striker that was that, that this was the firing pin that was in there. There is no way in hell with the wear on that that this was indeed the firing pin that had only seven thousand seven hundred rounds put through it. All right, that just doesn't happen. So it wouldn't be going out on a limb to say this this is you know reallocated or something like this. If it was you know, 
you, know, you can reallocate Glock parts sometimes, but not messed up Glock parts. <laughs> that's, that's a problem. And so that's number one. So if you look at the difference in a brand new safety plunger, that's an OEM safety plunger, I mean, there's a huge freaking difference. Huge. And if there were only 750 rounds and through it, it would not even be close to, you know, what this one is showing that was in this $2,000 build. Number one. Number two. Um, let me grab a Gen 3 mark. Okay, so we already discussed the, uh, you know, the cut right here. Next is going to be the area that we're going to look at, which is right here. Let me get this little small thing here so I can. The next is going to be this area right here. Okay. That is um, one of those areas that is going to potentially rub off of this part of the polymer which is right here. If there is an issue with the gun, you'll see some rubbing there. Now, it takes a lot of rounds to give you that information. Now, this is the trigger bar that came with the gun, and you can see that right there is not corresponding to what's inside this frame. Okay, so That is a lot of wear. That is, that is, I mean, look at it. It's scuffed, it's scraped. It's worn in an in a, in a interesting way too. There's like a line cut through it right there, if you can see that. All right, there we go. Sorry about all this glowing. That's number one. Okay, number two. Not bad if I look at the top of it. If I let me just grab my rag here and polish the top of this thing off. Typically, if it's a used bar that's been used for quite some time, you'll see, and you can see it here. And I just polished it, really polished it. You can see striker drag on the top of the. You can see what's called striker drag on the top of the bar right there. So that demarcate these marks right here. That line right there. See if I can't get it better. That's probably as best as I'm going to be able to get it. Maybe. No. Nah. Okay, right there. There you go. Kind of looks like it's, you know, worn a bit. That is the uh, tail of the striker. When, when the gun comes back like this, usually traveling on top of that, it'll happen. It'll travel a little bit on top of that angle that just, it's just a slide to frame thing, you know, before it grabs the striker right here. Um, so you can see that's there. Next is, and this is the, this is the part that's so telltale. I haven't even polished this yet, but you see that line cut at an angle right there. I really want you guys to see this. So there is a, a complete and total line cut into that metal. Right, yep, see it right there? It is a complete and total line cut into the metal. Not to mention, I'm gonna polish this, I'm gonna just write this away right now to see what we have here, because I guarantee you it's gonna, it's gonna show us some more information. Right, I don't want you to think I'm gonna do it. So, so I'm gonna just grab this and try to wear some of this away, polish some of this away. Not even polish it. I'm just wiping whatever the heck was on it off. Okay, so along with that, wow. You can see those demarcations and some of the, I mean, if it's even going through the plating in places, I, right there. This bar is Let's put it this way. This, this is not a bar that has 750 rounds through it. There is no way in hell. With, these mar with all these markations right here, this is definitely not a bar that has 
700 to 750 rounds through it. There's no way in hell, just no way in hell. Okay, so that's another issue. So we have a problem with the safety plunger in two areas. Problem with the safety plunger in two areas. We have a problem with the depression of the safety plunger, uh, chain, causing two things as well. So if you look here at the, if you also look at the extractor, you can see that mark right there. That's another area because the extractor, uh, you know, is, is captures this. Sometimes if it's not depressed, it's coming back and smacking that as well uh, during cycling. And that also contributes to, you know, marring and uh, problems you see with uh, the safety plunger. So what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six issues going on just here so far. All right, now, we won't say seven, we won't say seven on this because this, this is consequential to that. I mean, this is consequential to this. So now let's go to the connector. Um, first of all, let me see if I can, I might, it, it's so loose I might be able to even get it. Yeah, look, see, so it fell out. I don't know if I, I, I was looking down, so I don't know if I caught that on camera, but if I just go like this, that connector falls out. That is a huge problem. And why is it a huge problem? Because then that gives this connector the ability to move back and forth like so, which means it could grab here and snap. It can grab forward and snap. Well, it's not moving forward too much, but yeah, there you go. Just a little bit there, but back and forth like that is no good. Okay, that's just not what you want. And, um, you know, it's very unrefined. There's been no work done to it. It's just a, a you know, connector that's been, I'm trying to see if I could turn this other light off too, if I have a switch here. Maybe we'll get a better lighting if I can. Let's see. Nope. Kept the ones on, I want it off. Anyway, so let me get back over here. No, there's no switch there either. God damn it. Anyway, so <laughs> um, let me grab a Gen 4 housing and then, uh, okay, so here's a Glock stock connector, five and a half pound connector, which I have to literally push in there. You can see there is no, as I'm moving this back and forth, there is no wobble. It's not going to grab in the back. It's not going to grab in the front. You can see the difference in these two. Look. It makes the whole connector move, basically. And in order to get this connector out, I have to actually, um, what time?